Hello YouTube and welcome. It's been some time since we worked on a framework, but today we're back at it. This is part 15 and in this video we're going to work on our test manager. We're also going to create a class to retry our tests multiple times before actually totally failing it. We are going to create inside a test manager things to handle failed tests and succeeded tests. We're also going to add the retry logic here and we're going to add some logic to run before each of our tests. Now we're going to be using JUnit rules for that and a lot of the stuff that we're going to be working with from, starting from this video and moving forward is involving JUnit. And for this purposes, I have actually created a separate video, um, mini video series on JUnit specifically. Uh, it was done for some of the people that did not watch the entire um, videos of this, of how to build framework. Maybe they're just interested in learning about JUnit. So I decided to create separate mini series on JUnit and how to use that. So because that's done, I may not be explaining a lot of the things on in detail on JUnit in this videos now. Instead, what I will do, I will give a link to the video where I explain certain thing that we're working on in detail there. So if you don't understand something, please do watch that other video. And if you still not clear about what's going on, please do um, leave me a message and I will answer your questions. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and start. The first thing we're going to do is create a retry class in our core. So we're going to go to our core, right click on it and create new class. We're going to call it retry. And I'm just going to copy and paste some stuff here. So what this class is going to do, it's going to allow us to retry a test before actually failing it X number of times. And that X number of times can be passed in to our constructor in here. So we can say retry this test five times, 10 times, 100 times. And once it's done retrying it 100 times, it's going to fail it. But until then, it's not going to fail it. It's going to keep retrying it. So that's in a nutshell what this is going to do. If you want to know more in detail uh, what some of this code is, uh, go ahead and click on the video that's on the screen right now and check it out. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to go back to a test manager and inside our test manager, we're going to implement this retry rule. So we're going to call genuine rule and we're going to say public public retry call it retry equal new retry and then in the parentheses here we need to pass in the number that we want to retry our test for before failing it. So I'm going to say three times. That's kind of the sweet spot. <clears throat> And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create before uh, rule to run before each of our tests. And this is going to be public void. Let's call it before. And inside here we will have logic to reset our test info. But before we can do that, we need to implement our test info itself. So let's go ahead and create public static test test info. Call it test info new test info. Now we're going to go back to our before class and we're going to make sure that every time we uh, we're about to run a new test that we clear the test info data. So we're going to say reset and remember our reset method just nulls everything out. So that's what we want. 
Now, the next thing we need to create is logic for handling tests that pass and handling tests that fail. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to create another rule. And this is going to be a public rule. And we're going to call test rule. And then we're going to call this rule listen because it's going to be listening for tests that pass and tests that fail. And we're going to be using test watcher to do that. And we don't actually need that. The one thing we do need, let's put some icon here. We need to override. So we're going to use annotation override. And we're going to override public void failed. And this method has throwable as an argument. And it also has description as an argument. So we're going to override this guy. And then we're also going to override another. I'm just going to copy this. And we're going to override another method that's called succeeded. And this method just has description. <clears throat> so now we have created rules for handling tests that fail and tests that pass. Now, any logic that you want to have in here, you can add here. So for example, um, you run your suit and you have tests that are passing, then you may want to report to your database where you keep all of your results or however you're handling your results that, hey, this test with this ID passed, blah, blah, blah. But if your test failed, you may want to also report it to your database, but you may want to include things like screenshots and logs. So in this case, you can like use Android, um, ADB, I don't remember if you, yeah, we did. So like you can take screenshot and you know do whatever. This is just an example. I'm actually gonna leave this empty because I don't have a database um, integrated with this framework. So it's kind of hard to uh, demonstrate this part. So, but just know that you can put anything in here that you want to do when your test failed or passed. So I think this is it for this video. In the next video, we are going to start creating our tests. So we're going to finish our functionality test suit and navigation test suit. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how to use the test info inside of this test suits and see how our retry logic works and how our test manager working. So that's in the next videos. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video and take care.